During such events as a pyroclastic flow, complete human forms can often be preserved in a fixed position, turned to ash in an instant. Someone turning into a stone fossil with age, however, was thought to be an impossible scenario. That was until 1898, when an extremely controversial discovery was made deep within a copper mine. Although several reports have surfaced over the years of this most peculiar of discoveries, only one has ever managed to stay around long enough to be officially documented. Deep within an old copper mine in Chukikamata, an ancient stone woman, complete with basket and tools, was discovered. And although a date of only 400 years was preliminarily given, it is clear to the many involved that she is far older than that. The discovery was examined closely by José Torobino Medina, a central figure in Chilean archaeology at the time. He described his findings as follows. The body is that of a female. The depth of the soil where the corpse was found was no more than 6 to 8 feet, and the miner was probably searching the mountain when a sudden collapse buried her. The miner, feeling that the mountain was breaking down, lifted her arms up to protect her head the position in which her body is preserved. This discovery, although the only one of its kind, is highly controversial, and we suspect this may be because certain individuals are aware of its true antiquity. Beside the body were the remains of a basket, a stone sledgehammer, several stone shovels, sharpened pieces of wood, and a torn bag made of animal hide all leading to the conclusion that this mummy dates from a very distant time within our history. After more recent analysis was conducted, it was discovered that it was actually a man, strangely. He also has an unusually shaped skull, and a green hue from sulfate and chloride within the copper. It is thought this may have been one of the contributing factors in his marvelous preservation. The copper man of Chukwikamata is extremely difficult to research. And, although he is clearly of considerable historical importance, his whereabouts may continue to remain vague. Regardless of his known whereabouts, his existence will forever lend credence to a forbidden history here on our planet. Edinburgh, Scotland, a very ancient land with a castle built upon an extinct volcano. Many mysterious things lay and possibly live within Scotland the most famous of which, undoubtedly, the extremely elusive Loch Ness Monster. However, recent surveys would suggest that among the most popular of attractions are in fact its vast collection of, to the well-trained eye, extremely ancient coves and cave systems. Hand-cut, these caverns will demonstrate the immense skill, determination, and of course ingenuity of our distant ancestors revealing to all those who are lucky enough to visit them just what these ancient people were capable of. And hidden behind a modest door on Drum Street in Gilmerton is quite possibly the most incredible network of them all. Underground passageways, large, perfectly carved chambers, benches, tables, and even a small chapel, all painstakingly hewn from solid stone by hand. And thankfully, due to their popular attraction with tourists, Often the explorers amongst us, many open-minded individuals, have often been left with a sense of discomposure regarding the officially upheld explanation for their origins. As such, and rather predictably, many alternative theories, often involving a far more ancient origin for the cove and its purpose now abound. The mass regurgitated view regarding the construction would suggest that a blacksmith by the name of George Patterson who actually resided within the cove within the 18th century, somehow created them alone, by hand, and within a mere five-year period, with even George himself claiming to have cut this extensive, elaborate, and unquestionably enigmatic underground structure using simple hand tools. Since the claims three centuries ago, however, numerous holes have been seemingly discovered within this popularly upheld sequence of events fueling the already prevalent suspicions within skeptic parties, maybe in an attempt to hide its true antiquity, as we experience so often during our research. On Wednesday, the 15th of August, 1906, a front-page column by a writer known as F. R. Coles for The Scotsman 
dug into George Patterson's version of events, commonly referred to as the tradition. Coles found it to have been nothing but a fictional fallacy, possibly created by George himself in an attempt to profit from deception. It seems Patterson not only accomplished the seemingly impossible, excavating hundreds of tons of stone, but also it seems he successfully went unnoticed by the entire surrounding population during this entire procedure. Just who could have built Gilmerton Cove? When was it built? Why did they build it? With modern radar scans of the surrounding area indicating that even more systems lay close by, still undiscovered, possibly isolated by ancient cave-ins, you have to wonder, could the Gilmerton Cove be far older and originally far grander and extensively larger than anyone today could have ever possibly imagined? Will we ever solve the mystery of Gilmerton Cove? It seems only time will tell. When someone mentions the word Jurassic, visualizations of enormous creatures surrounded by man-eating plants will soon follow. And this is for good reason, because during the era of the dinosaurs, enormous creatures could only survive with equally enormous food sources. Within the Black Hills of Dakota, petrified remains of these once enormous organisms can still be found. Presumably, they can also be discovered in many other parts of the world. Yet within the Black Hills, it seems the prehistoric remains have avoided the deluge of sediment, which has been experienced elsewhere subsequently burying the evidence under several meters of earth. Petrified, enormous trees that, when alive, would have soared into the air, matching in height many of today's modern skyscrapers. Open to the public in 1929, an entire island, 50 by 100 miles in size, covered with the perfectly preserved petrified remains of a once gigantic forest. Trees of incredible and seemingly impossible sizes, destroyed by a cataclysm which made them collapse in unison. Now recognized as one of the largest outcroppings of fossilized petrified wood anywhere on the surface of the Earth, it is a rare natural insight into the enormity of Earth's ancient wildlife. Quote, Here is just the beginning of an astounding photographic documentation of this petrified island a little glimpse of an entirely unknown condition upon the Earth. It is a major historical discovery that, if embraced, will cause major upheaval within the science and religious communities," said Joseph C. Bennett from BeholdGiants.com. Scientists assume that the maximum height of a tree was 425 feet from the ground. At this height, the tree's ability to pump nutrients is supposedly overcome by gravity. However, Joseph, along with several other astute researchers, have discovered the remnants of ancient trees within the area, which would have had a circumference of over a half a mile. The Devil's Tower, coincidentally also within Dakota, has been argued for many years, by many people, to actually be that of a once enormous petrified tree. The formation of its rocky surface does indeed appear to be reminiscent of tree bark, Yet many will argue against such a premise, or indeed the possibility, based on traditional rather than more modern and controversial understandings of the past capabilities of plant and animal life. Thankfully, as more research is undertaken and more become aware of these amazing places, the possibility becomes even more likely. The channel's recent expose regarding the possible true age of the Great Pyramids outlaid many fragments of evidence strongly suggesting they predate a number of past advanced lost civilizations. However, it mistakenly overlooked a possible culprit for their construction. Numerous layers of casing stones, each once an enormous undertaking, occurred at varying times within antiquity, by different civilizations which many perceive were possible conservation efforts. Due to this, and the fact that I had so far identified at least three advanced separate civilizations elsewhere, achieved through the cooperation of nearly three years' work, focused upon cataloging unexplained advanced ruins from the past, characteristics within the techniques used to construct them, toolmark signatures left upon the stones, unique, identifiable architectural design, and differentiations exclusive to particular ruins were slowly gathered and used 
to identify three distinct ancient civilizations with their own unique directions of development. However, I mistakenly presume that the Cyclopean civilization was placed far closer to us than the original pyramid builders. This was put forward as a personal opinion, which mystery history reluctantly has to admit that, although based on logic, has been disproven by this very same methodology. In the video, it was stated, and I quote, I have never, and now strongly feel will never, find any indicative evidence of these civilizations building the footings under any of these gigantic megaliths." End quote. I had looked for a significant time for any signature stonework, linking any of the civilizations I had identified, to the placement of megalithic blocks over or around the 1,000 tons mark. If I discovered these characteristics beneath such enormous stones, I would have proven that they were indeed capable and more than likely the civilization responsible for their placement, with the most significant being the building of the pyramids. There were some issues which niggled MH regarding this postulation before the following discovery, however, due to the lack of any footings, had to postulate the pyramid builders were a far more capable group. One such niggle were the matching scoop-like tool marks used by the Cyclopean civilization found in Bazda Cave, Turkey, officially proven to have been the quarry for Haran, a nearby settlement, which possessed their signature Cyclopean blockwork, cuboid blocks with a raised center, synonymous with many ancient builds, with the same scoop-like tool marks also present upon the excavation of the unfinished obelisk. Yet due to the absence of footings, which would have demonstrated undeniable proof that they were indeed capable of working, moving, and placing such stones, I wrongly presume that they were incapable of such tasks. However, unlike academia, regardless of disliking the realization that he was mistaken about something, the motive of the channel is honest research and logical deduction, thus admitting one's mistakes allows not only mystery history's understanding to evolve, but is the only path one can take in the pursuit of truth. The Western Wall, Wailing Wall, or Kotel as known in Islam as the Barrage Wall, is an ancient limestone wall in the old city of Jerusalem. Originally erected to its current height by Herod the Great in 19 BC, enclosing the Temple Mount in a large rectangular structure topped by a huge flat platform. The Western Wall is considered holy by both practicing Muslims and Jews. Of the four retaining walls, the western one is considered to be closest to the former temple, which makes it the most sacred site recognized by Judaism outside the former Temple Mount Esplanade. Just over half of the wall's total height, including its 17 courses located below street level, is academically claimed to date from the end of the Second Temple period and is commonly believed to have been entirely built around 19 BC by Herod the Great. However, the western stone, weighing around 600 tons and a few other enormous stones, all located below ground level within the base, not only possesses compelling evidence of incredible antiquity, but beneath this enormous stone are the signature blocks of the civilization I named the Cyclopeans. This is evidence I wrongly presumed I would never find, demonstrating that the civilization I call the Cyclopeans were indeed capable of moving such gigantic stones. What's more, they were also capable of moving the pyramid stones, and indeed those of Baalbek, yet to be a viable suspect, due to the immense age of the pyramids, evidence would need to be found to support this, and amazingly, these foundation stones do indeed contain just that. Still embedded within holes, presumably cut for the placement of the blocks, timber chocks can be found in these foundation stones, wooden planks which have over an unimaginable amount of time petrified into coal, stone, and flint-like materials, indicating a minimum age of at least 100,000 years, as such decay and petrification would not have been able to occur in the currently attested timeline. Could these stones date from the original construction of Giza's Great Pyramids? It is undoubtedly a wall many followers of certain Abrahamic monotheistic faiths hold in high regard, 
and one of incredible importance to them. Amazingly, however, due to these amazing features, it is also of high significance in regards to unraveling the secrets of history. It is, undoubtedly, highly compelling. <laughs>